stress fractures of the foot. Bone is a living tissue and it responds to stress by making more bone. When the bone fails to respond adequately to stress, a fatigue fracture may occur. Stress fractures occur when the bone fails due to repetitive small stresses, microtrauma. Fracture can present itself early as a minor injury with minor symptoms, and if the fracture is not treated adequately, it can become very disabling. A high index of suspicion is necessary for the diagnosis of a stress fracture. There may be a localized pain that gets worse with progressive activity such as increased training, increased running mileage, a change in the running surface, or changing shoes. Early on, the x-ray may be negative in the majority of patients. Bone scan may be used to detect an early activity in the bone. Usually, the patient will have vague symptoms. The patient may see different doctors in order to obtain different opinions. A lot of tests are usually done. Female athletes who have decreased bone density and possible eating disorders will have an increased incidence of stress fractures. Female athletes with stress fractures should have a complete dietary and menstrual history. There is a correlation between eating disorders, amenorrhea, and the osteoporosis in female athletes. In general, stress fractures may be treated conservatively. Sometimes stress fractures require surgery. I'm going to discuss four common areas of stress fractures in the foot. The navicular bone. Calcaneus. The metatarsals. And the proximal fifth metatarsal bone. Stress fractures of the navicular bone are recognized with increased frequency, especially in track and field, football, and basketball athletes. It is more common in athletes with cavus foot. Pain from navicular stress fractures is poorly localized. The majority of navicular stress fractures are non-displaced and occur due to chronic overuse. The symptoms are persistent vague diffuse midfoot pain that increases with activity, localized tenderness in the navicular area. These two symptoms should draw attention to the possibility of navicular stress fracture. There will be vague pain on the dorsal or medial aspect of the arch. Delayed or misdiagnosis is common. Rule out bipartite navicular. The X-ray is rarely helpful and it is usually negative. Order MRI or CT scan. Fracture usually occurs in the central third of the bone and it is usually vertical and incomplete. Bone scan is sensitive, but high impact athletes may have multiple areas of increased uptake in the foot that decreases the value of the test. Diagnosis is usually delayed. If the clinical suspicion is high and the x-ray is negative, the best study is to get an MRI, which is frequently used. What is vascularity of the navicular bone? The area where the fracture occurs is avascular. The central third of the navicular is relatively avascular and has the greatest stresses. 
There is a risk of developing a vascular necrosis, non-union, and delayed union when a stress fracture occurs in this area of the bone. Treatment. Short leg cast, non-weight bearing for 6 to 8 weeks. Successful healing of the fracture is high when the fracture is acute. Occasionally, the fracture requires internal fixation with or without bone graft. If there is sclerosis of the stress fracture, then surgery may be preferred through a small incision dorsally and avoid disruption of the blood supply. The fracture is debrided and a local bone graft is used with a dorsal lag screw. In athletes, surgery is recommended to minimize the disability. The calcaneus. Stress fractures of the calcaneus are typically seen in athletes who are overtraining, using improper footwear, or those with mechanical abnormalities. The pain from a stress fracture appears suddenly and remains constant. Pain and the swelling on both sides of the heel may be seen. Imaging tests may be helpful to confirm the diagnosis of a stress fracture. Early x-rays are usually negative. Stress fractures may be difficult to see on x-rays until the fracture begins to heal. The x-ray at 46 weeks will show the fracture line on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus as a radio-dense vertical line. The fracture is best shown on the lateral x-ray. The pain associated with the calcaneal stress fracture can usually be reproduced by squeezing the heel from both sides. It is important not to confuse the pain of a calcaneal stress fracture with the pain associated with other conditions of the heel, such as plantar fasciitis. Always rule out calcaneal stress fracture in a condition of a heel pain. Plantar fasciitis is usually fluctuating. The pain from plantar fasciitis is more severe in the morning when the patient first stands on their feet. Other causes of heel pain and its locations are shown in this diagram. Treatment. Rest. Avoid activities such as running and jumping. Begin swimming to maintain conditioning and when tenderness is improved and the subtalar motion returns, the patient can resume activity. Use proper footwear to cushion the heel. Use orthotics. Restrict weight bearing for six weeks. Metatarsal stress fractures. This is the common area of metatarsal fracture. In runners, the fracture usually occurs in the metatarsal neck. In dancers, the fracture occurs in the base of the second metatarsal. Fracture may result in delayed union. Restrict weight bearing for six weeks. Look for anatomic causes of fractures in the second and the third metatarsal neck, such as heel cord tenderness, a short first metatarsal, or a long second metatarsal. Check for metabolic bone disease, osteoporosis, or osteomalacia. Examination. You will find tenderness, induration, and swelling. You may find cavus foot. Bone scan is usually positive. Metatarsal stress fractures occur due to the stress of the weight bearing or prolonged walking. The fracture is sometimes called a marsh fracture that occurs in military recruits and in runners who increase activity levels. It usually occurs in the second metatarsal followed by the third metatarsal. The fracture is diaphyseal in location and there will be localized tenderness at the fracture site.
The second metatarsal is the longest and the most rigid of the metatarsal bones and is usually exposed to greater repetitive stresses. X-rays are usually normal. A bone scan or an MRI may be needed. Treatment. Walking boot reduce activity. Then proximal fifth metatarsal fractures. The fracture occurs in the watershed area of the blood supply that is susceptible to stress fracture and nonunion. The blood supply in this area is tenuous. Healing is difficult with high incidence of delayed and nonunion. The stress fracture occurs distal to the Jones fracture. The Jones fracture is an acute fracture and the stress fracture is a chronic condition that will require surgery. There are three types of fractures of the proximal fifth metatarsal. In zone 1, tuberosity avulsion fracture. In zone 2, Jones fractures that involve the fourth and the fifth metatarsal articulation. Zone 3 is a stress fracture and that is distal to Jones fracture. The stress fracture occurs distal to the ligament that connects the fourth and the fifth metatarsals together. The stress fracture usually occurs in cavus foot due to increased ground reaction force over the fifth metatarsal bone. The lateral border of the foot will be overloaded in a cavus foot. There will be dull pain activity related symptoms before the stress fracture show up on an x-ray. The x-ray will show the fracture and its location. The x-ray will show varying degree of sclerosis and widening of the fracture line. Treatment. Lag screw fixation with or without bone graft. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.